Hi, welcome to the third part of the tutorial ASP.NET MVC Identity. Um, I have to confess that uh, I just messed up my um, structure of this uh, cast series a little bit in the beginning. Um, I just highlighted here the two parts, two and three. We covered a little bit of the second part in the last, uh, in the last tutorial. And then I recognize that I can't stick to my agenda anymore because it makes no sense from the presentation view. It made sense although when I just created uh, this slide, but um, for you know educational reasons, if you want, so it makes no sense to stick to it. So what I wanted to say is that just forget this agenda. And uh, I'm just going over to Visual Studio now and what we're going to do today is we just bring in first of all the asp.net ui layer in um, in the form of the standard template uh, let me do this first so i go there and say make me a new solution folder and i just go there and say please add me a new project asp.net and i go in and create a file system folder too and then let's call it ui.webapp. Okay, here comes the uh, MVC or the ASP.NET um, project template selector. I use MVC and I uh, tell him to bring in the individual user accounts, which means we just get a clue what ASP.NET identity wants in general for uh, implementing authentication. So I just um, I wait a second here because all these NuGet packages come into place. Oh, that was quick. Um, now we got it. I just make a break for, you know, bringing all this namespace stuff uh, a little bit better into play. Just a second. So um, I finished this just to show what I did. I just hit the properties and um, uh, corrected here the default namespace. And then afterwards, I didn't want to, do, to watch me doing all this. Hey, uh, go into each of the files which are present already and just replace this namespace stuff. The um, important thing here, if you don't uh, know already, inside of the views folder of the standard template, there is a web config, which is just for those views. And inside this web config, don't forget to replace this namespace too to the default namespace of your project that's the first thing and the second thing if you are done go into the global asx right click it uh, open with and then for example xml editor and don't forget to do this namespace stuff here too because um, uh, there's no other way to get into this file otherwise so now that i'm done let's take a look what the default template of ASP.NET identity or ASP.NET brings in here. So the thing behind um, to understand what they are doing here is the web config in the first place. And as you can see, I just clean this a little bit up. And now when we zoom in, as you can see, by default, the template is um, set up with a connection string um, targeting a local DB, which means that the team of ASP.NET Identity uh, is thinking, if you will, that you will use a local DB, which is uh, nothing more than a file-based SQL, if you want to. Um, so this local DB is um, meant to be in the data directory under some name. Um, and if you just execute this, um, uh, project and started, uh, there's um, everything wired up for you so that there will be this file, this MDF file, and it will be, um, you know, let's, let's do it simply, rather than talking about it. Let's hit it in Chrome. By the way, I just switched to Visual Studio 2017, which you can see here, it's a new uh, way of doing it. And now we Okay, it's started now and uh, you could do everything like login and re registering, which means there is this file. And now let me go to my SQL Server uh, Object Explorer and try to find this database. 
So let me take a look here. No, that is the wrong one. And let's just take a look. It is uh, MS SQL DB. Uh, ah, yeah. there it is. Local, this one. And let us go here. There it is. So we can connect to this database. At least I think so. Just again, where is it? This one, connect. Ah, there it is. So now we have here our tables. And as you can see, here is a default schema, which we already talked about of ASP.NET identity, which means <clears throat> this is the reason why um, everything is so confusing because um, Microsoft just uh, starts off with some database configuration, but what we want to achieve is that we don't use any direct access between the UI layer and the database, first of all. And second of all, we don't want to use the schema of data objects in our project. So that's just uh, for the sake of understanding what's going on here. Uh, what, what this means is um, in the, in the, at least we want to get rid of this one and uh, in the minimum we should use uh, something like this uh, manage NuGet packages and we want to do something like this get rid of entity framework at all so he needs it still because there is something inside Microsoft ASP.NET identity entity framework um, but uh, we don't uh, need this anymore when we are done here. Okay, so now that is the web config is the starting point for understanding all this stuff. Fine. Now the next part to um, understand uh, what's going on here is inside the app start folder. There's something that is called startup.off.cs. Um, this class is, if you will, the starting point of the authentication configuration of the complete web app. So you could go there and take a look at it. But what's the main thing here is we um, see here in those uh, three lines that uh, something is hooked up um, to tell the complete application what to do when it comes to authentication. So um, as you know, probably each uh, controller later on inside of the ASP.NET identity, uh, ASP.NET template um, in the MVC template to be um, to be precise, will use in each method an HTTP context and each HTTP context um, uh, can uh, access a so-called OVIN context. What this means is that HTTP context is very special in terms of it is something which is uh, inside of a .NET framework and it has its own specialties, it's uh, aware of IIS and stuff like that. An OVIN context, however, is a standardized context, which means <clears throat> it doesn't matter that it is ASP.NET or whatever, it's just uh, the base class of the context if you want to. So that's OVIN, it's open web interface, I think, something like that. So now, and what we want to, we will use OVIN instead of the HTTP context because we want to do something which is connectable to um, other services um, very easily, uh, regardless of if they're running on our site or on some other site using Apache or whatever you want. So that's why here everything points to the default or create OVIN per OVIN context stuff. It will hit you a lot of times here inside of MVC. Now what we see here is that he's saying, hey, please generate um, per single OVIN context um, classes. It's, it's kind of out of fuck. It's like kind of dependency injection configuration. So it's telling hey, when you create a new OVIN context, don't forget to create those two. So what we need here is he has an application DB context. He has an application user manager. Here are the factory methods always. And he has a sign-in manager. 
And the point here is if you go, for example, to this place, here you can see in the identity config, it's inside the app star too, that there are classes. Let me go there. Here are classes, four classes. And um, here is something called application user manager, for instance, and it's inheriting from user manager of type application user, which in turn is something else inside the models folder. Here's a models folder, it's prepared. And as you can see, there is a class called application user. It's inheriting from identity user, which comes from Microsoft ASP.NET identity. And <coughs> it defines one uh, method. And down here is another important class. It's an application DB context, which is nothing more than an entity framework code first uh, DB context, but a specialized because it's already an identity DB context and it's using application user. Here is our problem later on because what this tells um, the identity configuration is, hey, this is um, what um, user inside of my application should look like, what is wrong in our case. And on the, on the bottom, the DB context says, hey, this is the database context you should use, which is um, uh, wrong too, because we have our own context here. So that's all wrong. Okay, good. So to bring those things a little bit more um, in, in a structure, as you can see, it's very hard. I don't know. I don't understand why they did it. But anyway, it's very hard to, um, you know, to uh, take an overview of all the classes that are involved here because they are mangled up in uh, files and there are files with um, with many classes inside. Um, there are even um, uh, more, you know, ugly files like this one. As you can see here, here are all the view models for um, the standard views later on. They are all mangled together um, in just one file. And um, I don't like this approach at all. And by the way, it, I think it's, you know, it's uh, even uh, forbidden inside inside of the guidelines of Microsoft, but <laughs> who cares? So now what I'm going to do now is I will bring in a new project called logic.ui. Just follow me at this step. Okay. Add new project. And I just want to be it a class library, standard class library, it goes to the logic folder. And then let's say logic.ui. So that'll be the container for all the logic that is related to the UI layer. Okay, so now um, that was, I think, uh, the wrong template again. I'm currently, let me do it again. Sorry for this. Um, let's go to the folder, well, logic UI. I ch have chosen the wrong template. Find new project. What was it? .NET standard. Yeah, that makes no sense. Class library .NET framework. That would be the right one. Logic, logic .UI. So that's better. Okay. Let me again just um, uh, do the following without watching you. I will just correct the namespaces and then I will uh, move all this model stuff and view stuff and stuff like that, which is um, not part of the current UI project to the upper layer. So just stand by just a sec. Okay. So all that I have did is I just uh, moved all these classes which were formerly inside this models folder inside one single file into this view models folder here. And as you can see, there are a lot of classes inside of it. So um, I think this gives us simply a better overview of what's inside um, of ASP.NET Identity. This is needed, um, the, all the view model stuff is needed by those views here on the bottom in the account folder. There are a lot of default views for registering a new user and stuff like that. And all they uh, need this, for, uh, for instance, here register view model. 
And as you can see, I just moved it to this UI view models namespace. So that was the first thing. And the second thing here on the top is I just implemented the email service and the SMS service just as, as they were uh, into this um, uh, single assembly here, logic.ui. And then I just add a reference to logic UI inside of the UI web app and, you know, fixed up all this uh, references inside of it. So that was the first step. So now uh, we could get rid of a lot of stuff. Let's say this app data folder is uh, very stupid. We don't need it anymore. Um, so now this logic UI layer, as you can see, has no single reference to entity framework or to um, ASP.NET identity dot entity framework. There's nothing in it. It's just simply some models, some services, and that's it. Okay. Now there is still a models folder inside here, which is um, um, calling application user is an identity user, as I mentioned, and which says, hey, there's an application DB context. So we have to get rid of those two. That is a little bit more tricky because as you can see here, um, everything here depends on the basic stuff, which is coming out of the identity DB context, which we don't want to use. So we have our own user. It's not an application user. So now comes uh, the magic into play, which is um, in the heart of everything. Um, we have to tell them we have our own application user. So to do so, I just implement a new folder here and uh, let's call it models and now i will bring in our models which are um, you know uh, targeting this data.core let let me open it this is our entity framework model which we want to use there is uh, there are id fields for for example which are longs instead of um, strings, which is the default to ASP.NET identity and um, which have auto, um, auto identity here on this field and stuff like that. So inside now of this models folder in the logic UI, I will bring in some new classes. Here they are. So I just generated a class, for instance, called application user which is not working currently, as you can see. And um, this class in, uh, wants to inherit from identity user uh, and just gives him a lot of stuff. And this isn't working because of the fact which I told you that here now entity framework and ASP.NET identity uh, framework are not part of the references. What does that mean? So let's go back to the original identity model here. And let's take a look at this identity user um, class, which our current application user is inheriting from. This comes from Microsoft ASP.NET Identity Entity Framework. And it is an identity user of string and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know if we can go further. Here it is. So an identity user is an I user um, of all this stuff. As you can see, it has a lot of generic constraints. And if we want to implement it this way, so what we uh, want to do um, is just to implement all this stuff again, which is part of Entity Framework. But as you can see, this stuff is very plain. Those are only base classes um, for uh, in, in, in form of POCOs. So we could just implement all these interfaces by our own. But what you can do without breaking the architecture is to um, just bring in here, just manage the Microsoft, or let's say identity entity Microsoft ASP.NET Identity Entity Framework. We bring it in here on the Logic UI layer again via NuGet. So
Okay, now that is done. And now we go inside of our models and he should suggest to use this one and this one and this one, this one and finally this one. Let's save them all. And now this application user is fine. So what I wanted to tell you, you can use this ASP.NET Identity Entity Framework Identity User for as a base class for your user without bringing in a direct connection to your database in the end. It's just using those classes which are already there from the guys from ASP.NET Identity. If you don't want to do this, if you say it's even more um, uh, clean uh, to implement them by my own, I just go forward and do it. But um, there are still just properties and methods and stuff, uh, not methods and stuff like that. So what I did here now, I just added some stuff to my application user, which is just for convenience. I have here a list of resolved roles and I just take this list and make a string out of it. And here we have to do something uh, like this to say, hey, is this user locked or not locked? Just to show it somewhere in the UI or stuff like that. And here you can see that this one is the same which I did in my former application user here. So you can see this is exactly the same method. So that means now that we have this one in place, application user here on the top, we can get rid of this one and we can get rid of this one too. So we can get rid of the complete identity model and of the models. But as we did so, now we have a problem because when we try to build this web app now, it fails because first of all, there is no models namespace. We have to go to our, um, you know, models in uh, the UI models. Let's go here. And now he's complaining about uh, application user can not be used as T user because this application user manager is um, just still wanting to use the application DB context here on the bottom. All this stuff is still mangled up with entity framework. So our application user is not fitting in into this um, application DB context in this user store and stuff like that. So what we need here is we need a new user manager, not the one which is uh, given us here, but we need our own implementation. So let's go on and just implement it. So I go again to my logic UI and I just want to bring in some new folder, which is called, called managers. And I will just simply call it user manager. So this is public class user manager and I will just inherit it from user manager of my application user, which is in my models folder. And, and this is a, a very, very important part. I will tell him I want to use long as the key here. So maybe it's not a good idea um, to use user manager and uh, just call it custom user manager so we can better distinguish them. So this is my custom user manager and he's telling me that uh, something is uh, wrong here. Yeah, first of all, that makes no sense. Yeah, I want to inherit from this guy. So now um, next part is I want to uh, or I have to implement at least this uh, constructor. Let me just clean it up. And now I have this custom user manager. Okay, fine. This custom user manager says, hey, I need later on a user store which is able to handle this application user with the key long. So what's going on here with this 
um, a long thing. If we take a look at our application user, what he is saying uh, that he is an identity user of long and blah blah blah. This first part is very important. This one is the generic type T key. T key will be the primary key of our user, which is in our uh, fact it is a long and not a string as it is in the default application user. So now when we define that our application user itself has um, a key of long, the user manager, which we are inheriting from, must be able to know this and uh, saying, hey, it's not a simple application user of string, it is one of long. So that the user manager, which uses the user store in behind, will have or uh, must have a user store which is able to handle exactly those users. So that's all, you know, passing in the generic constraint that we um, in the first place just um, provided on our application user down all the line to all the classes which are involved. As you can see in ISP.NET Identity, we inherit from user manager, which in fact needs a user store, which we don't have yet. We just uh, define it like it should be there. Okay, next thing, if we go to our default uh, thing here, this create method is very, very important. So let's just copy it out, this create method, and let's copy it in here. And now <clears throat> this custom user manager should be returned on the create. And here are some namespaces which are needed. So we are saying, hey, when you create it, we need an identity factor option, which is application user manager. No, it is custom user manager options. And now it should create a custom user manager of user store uh, application user and long. No, not this one. Just a second. Oh yeah, we are not able to implement this currently because we don't have a user store, which is um, valid for this. And now we don't have a manager and stuff like that. We don't have this stuff already because we don't have um, uh, our user store currently implemented. So we just have to do this because this guy is very, very important because it is in fact the connection between our UI and um, the services which we want to create later on. So just go on with this user store. To start off with, what we do now is we just create here a new class I do it first of all directly in the logic UI and I call it service user store and it's just a class and there are uh, some uh, interfaces which we can use and this is for instance I use a login store of type application I think application user, yeah. The type of the user will be application user and the type of the key will be long. So this will be our first statement. We are saying, implement it please. We want to um, generate a simple new class which should implement the interface iUserLoginStore which is an ASP.NET identity interface saying if you have a service user store which claims to be a user login store, then you have to implement all these methods to uh, just, you know, um, implement this interface. So what this brings in is, it says, I'm able, this service user store is able to create a new user with this data. It is able to update a user, it is able to delete one and so on, so on, so on. And we don't implement this service user store currently. Now that we have this user store, we can say this one should be simply a new service user store. 
just a second. You want this context. So we want this one and we don't need this context because our service user store is um, very, very easily uh, usable without any entity context uh, behind it because later on this service user store, so just a second, this one will talk in all these methods to our API. That's the magic behind it. So first of all, we just did this one. Now um, he says, hey, if you have this manager, this custom user manager, which uses this user store, so how does he va validate users? So we just have to, you know, go along all this path and saying, hey, it's a user validator, which is using an application user, which has the key long, blah, blah, blah. It's all this stuff. Now here we set up our password validation. And here is again some some mistake because the phone number token provider says, hey, I'm not matching to the generics constraints. Yeah, that's true because this application user has the key long and the email token provider has the same problem and the data protection provider has the same problem too. You just have to keep on touch here all the time. So now that we are corrected this one, let's go inside of here. Hey, just do it a little bit nice. So now we have this custom user manager, which somehow gets this application user store uh, generated in. That's okay. And now uh, here's the create method and this custom user, user manager is fine. Although we have to keep in mind that just a second, this service user store, let's go there too, currently isn't able to do anything because he's not, he's just throwing exceptions like hell. And he's only a I use a lock-in store, nothing more. I come to this point later. Okay, now we have this one. Um, and now here is uh, the point that the I user store of application user is not matching anymore. So that's clear enough because in our identity config, we have this manager, which is obsolete now. And we have to sign in manager, which we have to uh, you know, uh, implement a little bit better right now. And first of all, we can get rid of this application user manager. This is idiot. -y. So now to the sign in manager, it's simply uh, a manager, which is responsible for not managing users, but to manage sign in processes. Okay. Just generate it and say add class custom sign in sign in manager and now I prepared a little bit of this stuff. Let us go there, implement all this stuff which we need. Come on, just do it. Uh, yeah, it should be good. No, it's not good. Uh, user manager, sign in manager. Ah, that should be correct. It's a custom user manager and that's a custom user manager and sign in manager should be in just a second. Oh, custom user manager and this should be a custom and a custom and a custom. It's just, you know, uh, simple as that. Uh, you, you just uh, tell him, hey, when you want to create a new instance of yourself, it's like a factory method here, you have to use the uh, uh, context, which is the Oven context again, and just tell him to retrieve the matching custom user manager. That's all. Now we have a custom sign-in manager. And because we have this, we could get rid of this. And because we could get rid of this, we can get rid of the complete identity config. And now just naively, let's say rebuild, which shouldn't work. Because now our, all the stuff here, the controller and stuff like that, uh, the managed controller, for instance, 
Let, let's go here. Let's say here this uh, managed controller, the account controller, they are just freaking out because they are saying, hey, I don't know what to do here. It's complete math, uh, which you did to me. That's first of all. And then the next part which isn't working is this one because now our identity config is saying, I don't know what to do at all. So we have to clear things up here too. So first of all, we don't need this DB context anymore because we are, no go we are not getting uh, against the database inside of our OVIN stuff. So well, that's cool. Now, application user manager isn't existing. We have an, an own, which is a custom user manager, which is in this namespace, which is generated like this. And the same is true for the sign-in manager. So let's go there and say custom sign-in manager. And this is a custom sign-in manager. So we configured this. Now the security stamp validator says, hey, so what is the user manager? It's again our custom user manager and it's application user and it has the key long. So now that we have this manager user and what is here, just a second. Um, so what's wrong here is that he says, I think here, um, he don't know uh, how, it, how to uh, get the stuff done, um, how to uh, get the ID if you want. And that's because, just a second, when we tell him when you got a claim ID, it is something, uh, we just have to put it to claim ID dot, I don't know, is it is, I think the method get user ready. Yeah, get user ready. So this tells him, let me just clean this a little bit up. So now it's better readable. We said him, hey, you, when you validate, you have to take our user manager, which deals application users, which have a primary key of long. And he says, okay, I'm, I'm good to go. I have this time span. I have this um, Lambda, which says, hey, how can I just generate a user identity? And then uh, we had to add this Lambda, which says, if you have a claim claims identity, how can you retrieve the uh, long ID out of it? And it is just take the claim ID, get the user ID from it and interpret uh, this one as a long. That's what we did here. Then we have all this common stuff. Let's just format it a little bit because we don't want to do anything here special at the moment. And that's it for the first place. Now um, we can't rebuild still because our controllers are going mad. So for, for instance, the account controller here is just uh, getting insane. Okay. Now I could go on and implement it in all controllers all the way down, but uh, I think a better approach should be to just add a new class here and uh, call it base controller. And now just go in there and say, I just prepared this. I paste it in. Um, I prepared it not the best way. I agree. It's a custom user manager and a custom user manager and a custom. I just show it in a, in a minute. Let me just go on and do stuff like that. Custom and custom, custom sign in manager. He is here, custom user, custom that custom that I think it should be just this one. And now I have uh, this controller and he's uh, inheriting from a PI no from controller, which is a simple MVC. So now that we have this one, we just what we did here is we just implemented all the stuff which we need. Uh, as you can see here, we say there are private variables for the sign-in and the user manager, and we just implement some constructors. 
um, which will later on be uh, used by uh, some magic to pass in those, those stuff. And then we implement uh, the dispose pattern and saying him, hey, if you have um, the user manager generated, please dispose it. And then we just hold properties here for the custom user manager and the custom signing manager. And all we have to do now is just we have to, you know, do a little stuff here to say, hey, you are a base controller. And that means you don't need those signing manager by your own. You just uh, need to, uh, as you can see, custom user manager and custom sign-in manager in this namespace and all you have to do is please call your base with user manager and sign-in manager that's it and here on the bottom you see i just put it there and there and it's already part of our base class now that's fine and what's going on here the user id is along so he recognizes that this user manager needs um, a user id this can be now so everything is fine here on the account controller now um, and just check this out because we did nothing oh we should be able to just get rid of the constructors at all. And now we have to do all this stuff on the home controller too. If we wanted to, we don't need it right now. And the manage controller is one which should use base controller, which doesn't need this stuff, which uh, doesn't need this stuff which is you know here user manager is already there and now we have a lot of stuff to do user identity get user id this is um, uh, just uh, coming over to uh, a, a string and here's the problem because um, our uh, default implementation would say hey the user ID is a string and what we could do now here is we can say hey just find the user by the current uh, name because each user manager or custom user manager 2 um, is able to find a user by searching for its ID and so we can say just use this user to get its ID for instance so now every time we need this stuff we have to replace it with this and uh, we already have this user and user can be null should be okay here so and so on let's go on there um, user is user id I just show it uh, this way because uh, I want you to be able to follow me here on this part. Var user, we don't need it anymore and it can't be now already. Um, besides, it could be null. I see it here. If user not null, then do this one. That's better. And now we can go on here and say if user not null, then do all this stuff with user ID and so on. User ID is get user ID and user ID here is a string. As you can see and um, we don't need this one just a second and this is not working 
um, because we would add an error here if we can't find this user user dot id user first of all let's correct it user dot user dot and we should do something like if it equals null then do something clever here maybe to do arrow view return now whatever it's not the best way i know and uh, this one needs what user id in the authentication manager and this is to string i think so what else so I will go here and uh, you know just implement it the correct way, and I'll be back in a in a minute. So here it is. Um, as you can see now, there are no errors. I just um, implemented everywhere this find by name async for getting the user and stuff like that. Everything is wired up now, and let's try to rebuild it again. And now we can see succeeded. And now just let's hit F5 uh, on this one, on this guy, to see how this uh, works now. So <clears throat> here is the default ASP.NET uh, form, and we have this login here on the top. And if we go there, he's just showing everything. And now let's go there and say la la la. And what happens now when we go to login? What happens here is that we get an exception and look where we get this exception. We get this exception in our service user store. And this is done because everything which we did so far was toward the point that everything inside of ASP.NET MVC and MVC identity uses this store instead of the default store, which was configured first. So our store is not implemented. As you can see here, He's just saying, hey, somebody wants to retrieve this uh, user test at testDE. And uh, now we're getting our new not implemented exception. That's what we wanted to achieve in the first place. Let me just wire up all these things together. So let's start from the beginning because we cleaned up everything. The begin. Uh, the beginning of everything is here inside the application start, which is just uh, configured to do all this, uh, uh, you know, registering of global filters, routes, and stuff like that. Here is nothing about startup um, authentication. This one is configured here in the startup out. And <coughs> here the main point is that configure out is called, and it's called from the startup, which is here on the bottom. This is the Owen style of doing global ASIC stuff, if you want to. So this is just saying, hey, please um, um, use the Owen startup attribute inside of my assembly and use the startup class. And now it gets called with configur uh, the configuration, which is um, just uh, um, uh, not a configuration, but um, convention. Sorry for my word finding problems here again. Okay, it's um, it simply gets called because everything here inside knows what to do, and then it's calling configure out, and configure out is just saying, hey, use this custom user manager, use this custom sign in manager with this factory methods, and <clears throat> just use everywhere where you need it an application user with the key long, and the custom user manager. So the custom user manager on the other side, if he gets constructed, he says, hey, if I'm supposed to work correctly, I need a user store with the same primary key type, which is, you know, um, uh, matching the application user primary key. And now this user manager knows how to um, communicate with this user store, which is not implemented right now. Um, but he knows simply that this user store is responsible. And now this user store is nothing else than logic UI. Um, 
this service user store, which currently just implements one interface, which is iUser login store. I use a login store on the other side. Let me go here to show you what I mean. I use a login store. It's just one of a few interfaces which are applicable um, on a user store, which says, hey, I use a login store is in my Microsoft ASP.NET identity. And there is I use a uh, where it is, I use a login store. This is the main thing which we had. Now, if we want to say that our store is um, capable of doing even more than just simply logging in a user, we could implement I use a logout store. So let's go there and do it. So it's an I use a logout store of. So what's needed again, application user as the user type and long as the key. And now we have to implement this. And the lockout store is just saying, hey, you need this stuff. So what this means is, if we implement this interface, now we are not only able to lock in users, but we are able to lock in terms of invalidate users, uh, which uh, just provide um, uh, provided uh, invalid data. Let's just bring a little bit nice order to it. And now there are more stores. Here are I use a email store. Um, here is I use a claim store. Here is I use a password store and stuff like that. We have to decide what interface should be implemented in this service user store. And our custom user manager just uses the store as it is, as it defined by us. And then if we don't implement certain stuff, it's just simply not working. For example, this phone uh, two-factor or mail two-factor authentication will only work if we, if we implement email store and phone store, phone number store uh, correctly. So, but that doesn't matter in, in the current uh, place. Um, just to wire things up, we just had uh, implemented the models in terms of here's our application user and stuff like that. And now we are good to go to implement our um, last project, which will be, just let me show you. Now we have the UI web app, which isn't working currently. We have uh, this logic UI, which just encapsulate all the stuff which is um, needed for the, the web app. And now we need the service layer in the next step and we need some connection between the logic, the UI logic and the service layer to authenticate and um, uh, do other uh, things against this real user store in our database. So that's it for this cast. Um, I will bring up the last cast um, very soon. I hope it was very interesting for you and um, let's see. Bye.